guys, welcome back to another video. I am still working on my Winifred Sanderson cosplay and uh, this week I'm going to start my wig. I um, I'm a little bit of a wig snob. I don't know why. I have been a theater kid and a cosplayer my whole life. Um, I've worn some pretty bad wigs in my time, but as I've gotten older, I've kind of appreciated a nicer wig. Um, that's not always in the budget. So, uh, this week I am taking a synthetic store-bought Amazon wig, um, and I'm going to dye it. And then I'm going to style it to be Winnie's uh, iconic um, double bun look. So um, the wig that I bought, I will... Boop. Um, it is a Berry Offa 613 Blonde. Lace front, 24 inch, 150% density. I know I'm going to have to do a lot to it. Don't get me wrong. It's a synthetic wig and it's blonde. Um, and the reason that I went with blonde is because if you look really, really closely at Winifred's hairline, the amazing costumers who worked on Hocus Pocus and designed her look took ginger graying patterns into consideration because gingers don't go gray gingers sand out and I mean like you can even see it in my hairline you have just different shades like this is starting to go more blonde than this it's becomes more of a sandy color and the whole head naturally lightens instead of getting your traditional salt and pepper grays. So they took that into consideration with Winnie. Um, and so I didn't necessarily want to start off with a straight copper wig because then I wasn't going to have those blonde whiskerings around her um, forehead and temples. Um, and so I want to try and get that by doing a dye job on a synthetic wig. Why a synthetic wig over a human hair wig? Price point. Um, availability. <laughs> human hair wigs are a lot harder to come by and a lot more expensive these days. A lot of things are sitting in customs for months. So what is stateside is becoming significantly more expensive. Um, for me, there's also the ethics of using a human hair wig because I know a lot of it, the hair isn't necessarily ethically sourced, but that's a conversation for a different day. So today we're using, and this is how it comes in a little black bag, it's nothing fancy. And then inside the black bag is a clear Ziploc bag with the wig. It also comes with two wig caps. And here she is. Now, as is, she would be perfect for Sarah. Perfect. Without any alterations whatsoever. She's got a really nice curl already. So if you were looking for a wig for Sarah, this would be great. You wouldn't even have to do anything to it. In fact, I'm thinking of ordering a second one to use for a Sarah cosplay. And then because she's a lace front, this is what her hairline looks like. Okay, you don't get any of that hard, you don't get that hard wig line. These look like your natural roots coming out of your noggin. Um, and that's why I say I'm a, I'm a little bit of a wig snob. She's a little thin. It, it claims it's 150, but she's a little thin, you know, but in that 30, 40 price point, no complaints. 
you know, if she was a $70, $80 wig, like, I can... If she was a $70, $80 wig, I'd be upset. But for a $35 wig, I'm not upset. I reached out to the good people at Rit Dye and uh, told them what I was doing. And lo and behold, I heard back. They uh, were great. They helped me. I told them what color wig I was starting with. I sent them pictures of this original wig um, and they sent me a dye formula. So we are using race car red, no, nope, racing red, chocolate brown, and apricot orange. And I have the ratios. I will write everything in the description box below. Um, but because <laughs> I'm so trusting, <laughs> I'm going to do a testy sample, see how that looks. Um, the other thing that I'm nervous about is because I'm using dye for synthetics, I am concerned that we are gonna accidentally dye the lace. So to protect the lace, I'm going to test. When I do my test samples on the colors, I'm also going to take this, you cut this lace off. I'm gonna take that lace and I'm going to um, put it in the dye with the sample hair, um, but I'm gonna try coating it in Elmer's glue because um, that's a technique we use in batiking fabric. Um, so I'm gonna give it a shot. We'll see. <laughs> We're on this journey together. To get the curls for Winnie's Firefly from Hell Red Locks, I took the recipe that I got from Andy at Rit and I tweaked it a little bit because as you saw in the um, photos of my first attempt, my sample, um, they leaned a little bit too rose gold, a little bit too pinky brown. Um, and it's still a beautiful color that I will keep in my pocket for another day, but I think that it needed a lot more heat, if that makes sense. So I ended up taking the recipe that Andy gave me, but I bumped up the first bottle of orange to the full bottle and then added a full second bottle of the apricot orange um, in my first dye bath. In my second pot, I did a full bottle of orange and just two caps of the chocolate chip brown. The reason that I did that is because I wanted to get her bang region to have that soft, warm, um, a much lighter, less red, warmer golden brown. And when I dip dyed it into that dye bath to go all the way up to her bang line, I legitimately steed in the water for about five seconds tops. Um, from there, I took it over to the sink, completely rinsed it till my water was running clear. Then I went back to the dye pot and went in to the big dye pot what if I call them Dye Pot 1 and Dye Pot 2? Or call them Dye Pot Fire and Dye Pot Orange? I, I don't know. Um, went into the larger of the two, which is the one with the red, so Dye Pot 1. Um, keeping my tongues around the hairline and not letting that submerge into the water. And I just bounced it in and out and then rinsed it and then went back into the, into the orange dye bath. Again, just bounced it and then went into the water to rinse it. I did this process of going back and forth between the two dye baths about four times, maybe five times 
each until I got to the color I wanted. The reason I did this instead of just submerging it and leaving it is A, I found the only way I could get the dye to permeate was to actually be at a temperature just below boiling and I didn't want to completely scorch the hairs. And B, because I didn't want to go too dark. It's easier to add more than it is to take away. So by doing it one dip at a time and rinsing, completely rinsing, utterly and completely through each step was how I was able to achieve it. By going back and forth between the two colors, that's what's also gonna give me those beautiful variations in color. The entire time I was doing this process, I was very specific and careful to not let the lace into the dye for more than a few seconds at a time. And when I took it to the sink, that was the first thing that I rinsed. So this is what allowed me to keep her more sanded out hairline. Okay, our Firefly from Hell is looking pretty good. What do you think? Uh, this is dry. Um, my room has, I have my blinds are closed. My ceiling light is on. And then I have my true light ot bulbs behind the camera. Um, and she's got some, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, she's very light on her feet. She's got some really gorgeous tones and highlights um, that I achieved from going back and forth Will you stop being noisy? Uh, she's got some gorgeous tones and highlights that I achieved by going back and forth in the pots between the two different colors. Um, so as far as the color is concerned, I'm thrilled. My one word of advice that I did not follow, and I do it all the time, so I don't know why I didn't. I look like I've been digging into the Cheetos, so make sure <laughs> You are wearing gloves, even if you're not handling the wig. Like if you're not taking, you're not gonna take the wig out of the pot with your bare hands. I was using tongs, right? But even in washing all the water and um, giving her a soak in fabric softener, my hands are still orange. So wear gloves. Uh, Today, I'm going to put her in curlers. So, let's get to it. I started off by thoroughly brushing and sectioning the wig off so that the front was a left front and a right front. And then the back, I pulled everything up except for the last three rows of wefts. I twisted the hair 
all the way around and around and around. And then I put one of those breakable rubber bands, the breakaways, around the end of the straw and I twisted them all the way up as tight as possible. And I made sure to make sure that my curls were not overlapping in any way because I wanted them to be uniform. And then when I got to the top of the strand of hair, placed a bobby pin there to lock them in place. And I did this all over the entire head. Once you sufficiently look like Cynthia, you're pretty much ready to go in a hot water bath. Now this water is not even at simmering. I turned the heat off as soon as it started to steam. I didn't want to scald it. So it did not get up to boiling. And now this is in real time. It is not slow motion. It is not fast. This is real time. So as, as soon as I have all of the wig submerged in the hot water, I immediately pulled it out and put it into the ice bath. Now, if you notice in the hot water bath, there are some things floating. Those are some of those breakaway rubber bands. They started breaking just from the heat, which I really wasn't upset about because that helped me disassemble faster. So here's what it looks like with all of the rubber bands out. To take the curls out, I used a combination of a large tooth shower comb. <laughs> My makeshift stand was giving me a really hard time right there. Um, but yeah, so I used a combination of a, of a shower comb and my fingers to loosen those curls. And I did this while it was wet so that I didn't have to worry about any additional unnecessary tangling. It takes time. It took about an hour to completely unravel this, but it was worth doing it by hand just for it to look nice. I wanted those curls to stay intact. I didn't want them to get frizzy. And then I did attack the ends with my large tooth comb if they got any knotty. For the styling portion of the wig, the first thing that I did was thin out my hairline. I used my tweezers, my hair cutting scissors, and my thinning shears. I am wearing a wig fix to hold it and lock it in place on my cranium while, um, I'm working so it doesn't shift around. Now, I really want Winnie's Widow's Peak, so I trim off a heart shape out of my lace. Being sure not to cut my real hair. I have a lot of real estate on my forehead, so I pulled this down a little bit so that I don't, um, A, I don't accidentally cut my real hair and So here I separated out those very front sections of hair I'm pulling everything out of the way just so that way it's not in my way fighting with me and being obnoxious. And what I did is I took my thinning shears and I cut a W shape into the lock of hair that I had pulled out and with my comb pulled out everything that came off. This gives that hairline a natural thinner look and now I'm separating it again and taking that middle section, it's not quite it, my hairline, and I'm doing it again. And I do this over and over and over again until I have a natural 
wispy baby hair look. I don't like just going straight in to cut them with scissors because I feel like sometimes those end up being too blunt and unnatural. And then I also am intermittently tweezing some of them out, which will also help it make, make that hairline look a little bit more natural. And back in with my thinning shears. Every once in a while, I'm pushing them into the hairline to see if it's thin enough. And then I come back in with the thinning shears again. And I find going this route is the most natural looking way of getting a natural hairline. And that's how much hair I clipped off. So at this point, for styling, I have transferred her back onto my wig head and I'm clipping everything that is in the crown of the hair out of the way into two sections. And I'll show you that seam. Oh, that hair nest. Nice. Okay, and so there is that seam where my lace front meets the first row of lefts. Okay, now I am giving the backside of the wig a zigzag part so that way I don't have a hard weft line that is visible at the back of the hair when we have her two buns pulled up. Okay, and now I sectioned out everything that's in the crown of the head. And then the last handful of rows I left down and that's that crown section I'm putting into two space buns with bobby pins. The curls here are so tight that um, I don't need to worry about teasing this. I just wanna get it in place. They kind of Velcro to themselves and I'm doing that on both sides. And all I'm using is just my fingers to comb it into place. I don't wanna break up that curl. And now I'm starting to gradually pull up the weft from the back side of the wig and tucking the ends into the space buns at the front. I do leave a few random wispies sticking out because I love when Winnie runs, she's got some stray flyaways that bounce. So I am leaving those out. And again, just more pulling up weft by weft as I go. And I do pull down a little bit on the base here, as you can see, and I'm doing that to hide the track of the weft that's next in line. And I'm also using my fingers to kind of tease the, the wefts into place. I'm gonna do this all the way to the bottom until I get to the very last row. And there's another little bouncer that I left out. And while I'm in the last row, I did leave down a lock on the side there. And that's the one that uh, Winnie wears over her shoulder. So now I'm working on the front and I've taken the bang section back to the back of the wig. And again, I'm still just using my fingers to arrange the curls in place where I want them. and pulling them into place accordingly. And then those ends, I'm simply taking a bobby pin and tucking them into the underside and pushing the bobby pin into the space bun underneath all of the wefts and the curls kind of hide everything. And I'm doing that with the two layers of bangs. 
and just zhuzhing everything as I go. But again, because these curls are so tight, I they are really doing all of the work for me. And I'm really sorry about the lighting issues there today. I my office is the other half of my office is having construction, so I'm kind of locked into this one corner this week of uh, which which angles I'm allowed to shoot from. If you saw the other side of my room, you'd cry. But here she is. Glorious morning. Makes me sick.